speaker then is Catherine Connolly. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for coming in. It's very helpful, um, um, and it's very helpful when you're plain speaking. And I also want to thank my colleague, um, Deputy, beside me for actually pushing this. This is the reason we're discussing it today. And, and I, as it emerged, it's shocking. I've just got the report and I'm just looking at it. And I'm no expert, and I'm certainly no expert in relation to this terminology. But um, just, what jumps out here are a number of things. So you just... Um, the MANS was a good, it's a good project, theoretically, run by the government, and a very good project to roll out to, to roll out the infrastructure necessary. And then ye, ye buy that, you're a customer of that, as are other, other yes. private entities. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And so the, it's run by Enet. Yes. And they, I'm looking at this report now, and they're saying they have a sister company then. And if that sister company is... ETNL, yeah. yeah. ETNL, yeah, which was separated from Enet in 2015. Now, you just... And this company also provides wholesale products and services. So the sister company also provides a similar service, is it? They provide commercial services. So so there's one entity that is, is due to manage the state, and that's separate. Yeah. And then this other company is, a, is does, runs the commercial business for them. So backhaul and um, services, stuff that's not paid for by the state that they run as a commercial organisation. Okay. And just in relation to that backhaul, then, if we look at 222, paragraph 222, concerns with the current business model in this report that was just published. Yes. Yeah. Under the concession agreement, ENET must treat all its customers in a transparent, non-discriminatory and equal way. Given that ETNL and its backhaul business, which you've just referred to, is a related company of ENET, ENET may have an incentive and an ability to discriminate against customers who buy the man products in favour of customers. So there, discrimin there is a, an incentive to discriminate in favour of their own customers. Is that right? Is that what you... Is that what that's that, saying? That's what the report is saying, yeah, yeah. that it would encourage that without that transparency and without that understanding of how those two companies are yeah. run, their accounts, how they're separated, yeah. different people, different buildings, yeah. it's unclear as to how the relationship between them works. Okay. And then just go back, you said when you submit a bill, or what did you say? You get when we get billed, so yeah. we, we're, we're a large customer of, yeah. of the man's, so we get charged by the, by the company for our service, yes. for the services that they that, um, they provide to us. Yeah. Um, we, we buy both man services and we buy commercial services from, from this company, and they're all together. So even though deal. theoretically they're two separate companies, and you buy services from both companies, and then you get Sin what? Single bill. A single bill. Okay. All right. And then just in relation to just going back to the tendering and the extension. So the in a contract was done in 2004 between Mans and this company for 15 years, and then from 2004 to 2019. There were two, com two contracts. I understand that. Yeah, one yeah. 2004 to 2019, one from 2009 to 2024. And both of them phases. have been extended? Yes. Okay. And if we go to the one for 19, that was extended, has been clearly set out, in 2017. Yeah. And you were unaware of that? Until, until we saw the Until it was brought to your attention one way or another. And then it was... Uh, then you wrote and they said, it's too late. Yeah. And were, was any reason or reasons given for the, to um, not tender it and to um, extend there, it? There was a report um, commissioned by the department by Norcontel. What's um, that called? Norcontel is a consultancy company. Yeah. Um, and that's been made public, that report. And that was a, a study that the department asked Norcontel to do to see is it better for the department to extend that contract or to go out to tender for it. Yes. And the Norcontel report said you should just extend it and not go out to tender. Okay. And that's available? That's available. And you've read that? We've read that. And, and we, what did we, you, dis what? we disagree with, with the findings yeah. of that report. And wh what was the what was their um, decision based on that it was better to extend rather than go out to the market again? They believed it was better value for money for the state to extend it and that there was a risk inherent in going out to tender. That the existing the company would not invest and would de-invest 
in the services in the, in the period between 2017 and 2019. That was their view. We don't believe that's the case. The company is very profitable. We don't think they would have de-invested in the, in the mans. But, but they had a contract up to 19, so they were obliged under law yes. to, com to comply with that contract up to 19. And then this company, that, this analysis said, well, they won't comply with their contract, really. They'll it didn't say they wouldn't no. com uh, comply is with that, the that's contract. That's the implication of it, is it? There was a risk. Yes, there was the a risk. risk. That they might, yeah. Okay. And was there any public consultation with various stakeholders? No. None at all? No. In relation we, to that? We... we expressed our interest to talk to the consultants, both the Analysis Mason consultants and Norcantel, and we, we were told our concerns would be taken on board, but that we weren't to speak to them. You weren't to speak we to weren't, them? We weren't allowed to speak to them, no. And why was that? I don't know. And how were your concerns taken on board? Um, our, some of our concerns have been taken on board in no, the No, no, in that Mason particular report, report how, how yeah. were your concerns taken on board? What was the mechanism for your concerns to be taken on board? Our concerns were on, the, on the, the running and the governance of the of the contract on the analysis Mason report. Okay, but just going back, you, the, the other report that justified the extension of the contract without any open competition. You weren't allowed to talk to them. We didn't. We didn't ask to speak to them. We didn't okay. know that contract. We didn't know that was happening. Was, was happening. Yeah. Okay, so that Until report then published. came to a decision, but that that report didn't talk to any stakeholders or test out the market or look to see what was... Well, it didn't, didn't talk to us. We, we can't, can't speak we, for we anybody did, else. We can't speak for anybody else, okay. but it didn't talk to us. Yeah. I think when we had the department here some time ago, we referred to this report, okay. so I... Oh. We'll get to okay. if we have just to fi finally, just on the cost, some of your concerns have been taken on board, presumably, I think you said that, presumably, in this report. Yes. Uh, pricing in particular. Yes. So the prices were published, they were up on the website, but they hadn't changed exactly. since the initial contract. And you're saying that's not possible, given the nature of the business that you're all in, that prices should be falling? Is yes, it? prices are falling in the telecoms yeah. industry. They have been for, for decades. Um, and yesterday, the pricing was reduced on the back of that report by 50%. So the new pricing published yesterday, 50%. A 50% cut announced yesterday? Yes, and it was published. The day before the we were here? And this report is there for 12 months in the department? In, I think it's actually in the Minister's statement. Yeah, we There's have a comment statement. There. There's one line there, 50% price reduction of five hours. Um, have you an idea? Just help us in this statement. Oh, sorry, Bear with. That's the one thing I haven't got in front of me. Apologies. Um. So, so who published the, 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 the saying this that they should publish um, the connection fees for any product and they should publish the existence of any discounts? Um, the minister says that in his statement yesterday, and they say it's implemented by Enet. So Enet published that yesterday. Then yeah, it published the, the headline price, the, the maximum from what price for fibre. Yeah, from from, from I don't know. Uh, five euro to two euro sixty. Five euro twenty to two. Okay, euro 60. so explain. To, so we're saying we're looking at this man's contract that's out there for years. Um, there's a report in the department a year. We're having this meeting with the providers, which inevitably these matters might get discussed. And the day before the Public Accounts Committee, the new minister, and I give him credit for that, published a report that was in the department with a recommendation that the price, the, 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 there should be price, uh, prices dealt with. And yesterday, um, it, the, the minister says yesterday that this has been implemented by EMNET. If there's up to you now. And when did they publish it yesterday? Yesterday. So an hour before, an hour before, or a minute before, the minister said um, this should be published. Enet did it. And you're saying there's now a 50% reduction for new connections. Explain to us there in layman's English, if you can. So it's, it's, a, it's so there's a major reduction in the price of the service provided for the metropolitan area network for new connections by approximately 50% announced yesterday, based on a report that has been sitting in the department for the last 12 months, coincidentally the day we have all the operators in and the person who is providing that service on behalf of the department will be here uh, shortly. 
lo and behold, there's 50% price reduction in announced yesterday. Just to clarify, it's, 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 it's for existing services as well. So oh, it's, 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 yeah, it's, not, it's not connection, it's the rental of the service, okay. which is the main headline price. Yeah. So, service. in other words, the public will want to know, will they expect to see a reduction now in their bills? So, so, in that, their so that price reduction will immediately flow to the operators, to operators to like yourselves. yourselves. It will encourage more people to come in and use the mans, and that will encourage flow-through reductions in costs to consumers So and this businesses. will eventually work yes. trickle down to yes. reduction. Fabulous. So this sort of question, if this review had been done earlier, and if this committee meeting had been held earlier, the prices would have come down and gone up on the whatever site. We, we might say that. <laughs> hmm? We might say that. Just, if, just, sorry, did you want to say something? Yeah, it's the third paragraph of the statement. Yeah. Yeah. It's the yeah. third paragraph of the minister's statement. Um, to read it out to us there. The review made by a, num by a number of recommendations which are currently being implemented by ENIT, including a reduction in the maximum annual price of dark fibre by over 50% to 260 per metre. Wow. Okay. Just uh, before my time runs out here, just, uh, yeah. just go back to one last thing for me. Originally, when this was tendered originally, you wanted to enter that process. And you, I, did I understand you were told at the time you couldn't because an operator? So Can you just e clarify yeah, that for so me? Yeah, so the EU state ales rules, which Mr O'Dwyer uh, mentioned, are, yeah. are published by the European Commission. Yeah. They were very clear and they said the mans must not be run and operated by an operator, by a telecoms operator, because Europe saw that there would be a conflict of interest. So if you're a telecoms operator and you're managing the mans, there was a perception and an incentive to distort competition in that yes. way. So they wanted a company to come in and just run the mans. And therefore, we were a telecoms operator at the time, so we were excluded from that process. OK. But the actual entity that won, there's a question now as to whether there's a conflict of interest, the very thing yeah. that you were prevented. Mm -hmm. the, rules, the rules prevented you from going in. But the at entity that the got entity it... The entity that got it were not an operator at the time. At the time. They have become an operator I over see. the years. And, and that's so where the conflict has arisen. And so when they became an operator in time, the rules applied? That's what we believe, yes. The department clearly have a different view. All right. And therefore there's a role for the, the regulator here or somebody to say, well, because that can happen, somebody is not an operator at the time, but they become an operator. But then there's a conflict of, or certainly it seems to be a conflict of interest. And there's nobody in a monitoring position saying, hold on here now. It has changed. Things have changed. And not alone that then, but the contract is extended after that has become apparent. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Garm Garm